Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. How about your Michigan Wolverines? Go on the road at a top 25 Minnesota squad that won 10 games last year and dominate. Final score 49-24, and it was a complete obliteration. They dominated essentially from start to finish. Minnesota scores a special teams touchdown early. Minnesota controls it late, and we're going to get into the details in a minute. But as I look back on that game, and I look back on what happened... I think the thing that stands out to me, not just about this game, not even just about the Big Ten, but about college football as a whole on Saturday, what stands out to me is this. Why does Jim Harbaugh never get credit for anything? Right? Like, like, I mean, think about it. He goes on the road as a slight favorite at Michigan, plays a top 10 team, or a team that won 10 games last year, ranked in the top 25, and steamrolls Minnesota. And I get that Minnesota isn't a vintage, you know, uh, brand in college football that when you win against them, you celebrate and you storm the field, but they crushed a good Minnesota team, a good Minnesota program, and it was complete crickets on, on Saturday. Nobody's talking about it. And so to me, that is the big story coming out of college football this weekend, and it's very simply this. Why does Jim Harbaugh get credit for nothing? Why doesn't he ever get credit for anything, Right. When he wins a big game, like he did on Saturday, well, he's Jim Harbaugh. Well, it's Michigan. Well, he's supposed to. And then when he loses a big game, oh, he's terrible. He's the most overrated head coach in college football. Well, which is it? Is he really overrated? Because if he's overrated, let's give him credit when he beats a good team. Or is he just a really, really, really good coach that maybe hasn't quite gotten his program to that elite level that everyone, including himself for the record, expects? So, like, which is it? Which is it? Where are we at with Jim Harbaugh? And so that's where I want to lead the show. That's what I want to talk about. And I want to start with the game itself. As I said, final score was 49 to 24. But that really doesn't tell the story of the game itself. Because the final score was really way more one-sided than you would even indicate from looking at that box score. Michigan falls down early 7-0 based off a blocked punt that is essentially converted into a touchdown. I think Minnesota scored one or two plays later. And then from there, Michigan largely dominated the game. If you watch the game, it was pretty one-sided from the beginning. They're up 21-10 after the first quarter. And again, Minnesota's only score is essentially off of a blocked punt. Michigan is up 31-17 at halftime and then cruises to the 49-24 victory. On top of that, let's never forget that coming into this season, this was not supposed to be a vintage Michigan team. This was not supposed to be Jim Harbaugh's best team. They lost Shea Patterson, their starting quarterback from last year. They lost three of their top wide receivers, Donovan Peoples-Jones, who had the game-winning touchdown score for the Cleveland Browns on Sunday if you were watching the NFL. They lose Nico Collins, who opts out. They lose Tariq Black, who transfers. They also, oh, by the way, lost four starters on the offensive line and a bunch of guys off their defense. And so when we looked at this Michigan team, we saw a team that lost a ton of guys off their offense, a ton of guys off their defense that had no real expectations coming into this season. Going on the road, playing a Minnesota team that, as I've said a few times, won 10 games last year, and Michigan was a slight favorite, but I'll tell you this, I talked to gamblers all week And the inside scoop was that most of the money in Vegas was coming in on Minnesota. Not just from the public, but from the professional gamblers. Minnesota had more money coming in and way more money coming in from the professionals, which means that the professionals thought that Minnesota could win this game outright. Instead, Michigan not only wins, but they completely dominate. Not just by the final score, but if you watch the game, their defensive uh, front, their, their front seven, their linebackers and defensive front were in the backfield all freaking night long. The, uh, the, the offense was phenomenal. You lose Shea Patterson, this kid Joe Milton may be even better. He finishes 15 to 20, 22 passing, 225 yards, and then pretty much everything else is by committee. 
you lose some of your top wide receivers, you still end up completing passes to nine different wide receivers, six different running backs touch the ball, and it was just a complete, convincing, fun, easy victory for Michigan. And so when the game went final, I thought, okay, cool. Like, well, let's start the, the hardball conversation, right? Because we, we crush him with everything. We crush him every time he loses to Ohio State. We crush him every time that he loses a meaningless bowl game. And again, bowl games are meaningless to everyone except for people who do not like Jim Harbaugh. So I assume, of course, that when they lose, it's going to be, well, we got to give him a little credit, right? On the road, top 25 team, 10 win season last year. Minnesota's good. PJ Flex good. Row the boat, all that stuff. And it's crickets. And it's nothing. And so I'm trying to figure out where we are with Harbaugh, right? And look, I get it. I do understand all the stuff that you already know about Harbaugh. I know that this is now year six for Jim Harbaugh. I know that he is 0-5 against Ohio State, his biggest rival, the school that he was brought in to beat. I know that Michigan has not won the Big Ten under his watch. They haven't even won their division under his watch. They haven't made the playoff under his watch. And when you pay someone the money that you're paying Jim Harbaugh, You expect those kind of things. Maybe not every single year, but at some point, you got to beat Ohio State. At some point, you got to make the college football playoff. At some point, you got to be competitive with the best of the best in the country. And right now, Michigan isn't quite there. But to me, it's kind of the same situation with Kirby Smart, right? Like, we spent a ton of time talking about Kirby Smart over the last three, four, five weeks. And, like, as critical as I've been of Kirby Smart, what is, like, the only thing that Kirby Smart can't do? can't beat Nick Saban. Doesn't mean Kirby Smart's a terrible coach. Doesn't mean Georgia should fire him. Doesn't mean that Georgia is the worst program in the world. It just means that there's one team that they have a bugaboo against and they can't figure out, and that's Alabama. Doesn't make Kirby Smart a bad coach. By the way, doesn't make Lincoln Riley a bad coach that he wins a ton with Oklahoma, but once he gets to the playoff, he can't beat the elite of the elite. Oklahoma 0-3 under Lincoln Riley when he gets to the playoff, 0-4 overall. Doesn't make Lincoln Riley a bad coach. Doesn't mean we got to fire Lincoln Riley. But Lincoln Riley doesn't get 1-100th of the heat that Jim Harbaugh does. And I just think when you look at it from the bigger picture, I don't really understand why. I don't think it's really fair to Jim Harbaugh. Not comparing Lincoln Riley to Jim Harbaugh apples to apples. But if we're, not, if we're going to give Lincoln Riley mostly a pass for getting to the playoff but not being able to beat those elite teams... Why are we not giving Jim Harbaugh somewhat of a pass? Because the one thing he can't do is beat Ohio State. Because, I mean, think about it, right? Like, everybody wants to crush Jim Harbaugh. Here is Jim Harbaugh's track record since he's gotten to Ohio State, or since he's gotten to Michigan. And anybody who's a longtime listener to the show knows that I talk about this a lot. But in his first five years, first five seasons at Michigan, this is now year six, he's had three 10-win seasons. Not bad. Four nine-win seasons. Really not bad. Five eight-win seasons in five years at Michigan. Does he need to beat Ohio State? Yes, he needs to beat Ohio State. We get it. But he is taking care of the teams that he's supposed to. He's beating good teams, and he's beating good teams uh, in all sorts of venues. Last night it was against Minnesota. He beat Notre Dame last year. He's beaten Penn State in the past. One team he can't get by is is Ohio State. And I look at it. Three 10 win seasons, four nine win seasons, five eight win seasons, for all the criticism that Jim Harbaugh gets. How many schools would kill to have the last five years that Michigan has? Because I'll tell you what, I watch a lot of Texas football. Texas football ain't back, baby. Texas football would kill for the five years that Jim Harbaugh just put together. Miami would kill for the last five years that Jim Harbaugh put together. Florida State, Nebraska, Colorado, Texas A&M, on and on and on and on and on, Auburn, all these schools that we think of as these powers across college, they would kill for what Jim Harbaugh has done the last four or five. By the way, you know who else would? Wisconsin, Iowa, all these teams that are good, but not like, like, I just don't understand this thing with Jim Harbaugh. And so to me, yes, I get that he needs to beat those elite teams to put the program in that elite category. But I think when you look at what he's done, And I think when you look at the other thing, that he never gets credit when he actually beats somebody good. Like, where are we at with this guy, right? Because I look at what happened on Saturday night. I think about it and I say, just, 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 let's play a little 
College football Mad Libs. Coach goes on the road, loses his starting quarterback, three of his top four wide receivers, four offensive linemen. Puts up 49 points with a first-time starter at quarterback. Beats a top 20 team. If that coach was named Ryan Day, oh, he's an offensive genius, he's a savant, he's incredible. If it's Lincoln Riley, oh my God, he could take any quarterback and turn him into uh, whatever. Heisman Trophy candidate. And it's Jim Harbaugh, and it's just crickets. And so when I look at Harbaugh, all I'm saying is, like, can we just give him a little bit of credit on anything? I'm not saying that we have to treat Minnesota like, uh, you know, like it's, it's winning the Super Bowl here. I'm not saying we have to treat Minnesota like it's clinching a spot in the playoff. But again, he's either overrated, in which case he probably deserves a little bit of credit for beating a top 25 team on the road with a first-time starter at quarterback, or he's properly rated, and we can't go crazy if he can't beat Ohio State this year. Like, like we just got to make a decision on him. And so I'm not going to belabor this point. I want to give Michigan credit, but I just couldn't help but think about this coming out of Saturday because you have so many narratives, right? Dabo's yelling at the media because he's unhappy about this, and Ryan Day and Nebraska, uh, Ryan Day and Ohio State win convincingly, and Alabama crushes Tennessee, and they're all smoking cigars. And Penn State has this crazy win, and Kentucky can't figure out their offense, and Tennessee is a mess. And it's like, and just nobody's talking about Michigan. Nobody's talking about the team that goes on the road, beats the top 25 team on the road, first-year starter, quarterback, wins convincingly. And so all I'm saying is, can we give Jim Harbaugh a little bit of credit for anything? That's all I'm asking. I don't think it's too crazy. And yes, he's probably not going to beat Ohio State this year. I'm not saying that they're going to go on and win the national championship, that this year is the year that they take that leap, that they take that next step, because I just don't see it happening. But it's like at some point, man, we got to give this guy credit for something. And I feel like he's the only guy that gets zero credit under any of these circumstances.